Good afternoon. Welcome to the Community of Technology, where we connect the global community with news, information, resources. I'm Stu Reed, here with my co-host, Dave Bernstein. Hey, Dave. Hey. So what's the latest, Dave? I know we've been talking a lot about AI. I think we're going to change it up a little bit, but I'm sure AI is going to filter in there somewhere. What do you got for us today? Uh, I know there's a lot going on in the health field that, uh, that's been percolating uh, around, uh, particularly around uh, cancer uh, research. Uh, what, what's the latest you got? Okay. What just came out from the news is that Moderna whose mRNA is one of the two in the first shots, and Merck have reduced a cancer vaccine that it seems to be working. A 157-person trial, the amount of, the number of cancers went down by about 30, cancer relapses went down by about 30%. percent mm -hmm. Now, that's big for two reasons. One is that's going to save people's lives. Second, because, and there's three years actually. Second, because they've got way more coming. Mm -hmm. That the same technology that goes into the vaccines is now being adopted. There is already in testing a vaccine that does flu, uh, flu and COVID, likely to be standard upgrade for everybody or standard booster for everybody next year. And there's almost nothing that's growing in the system or, or is tied into the immune system that isn't looking at MRA. Now, now you're going to ask me what this, the heck is that? Yeah, this is the new technology that was developed uh, uh, under the the COVID vaccine uh, whole protocol regimen, right? They break that down for us. Okay, everybody's heard of mRNA because it was the first two COVID vaccines. It's been another COVID vaccine since. Chinese are using it. I believe the Thais are using it. Mm -hmm. And the M so, and mRNA is messenger, is that right? Messenger RNA? Messenger RNA. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to figure out how to say this without losing people in the biology I've just been learning. Some death. I went into the, uh, excuse me, I went into some of the genetics and medicine and so on. Mm hmm the mRNA was discovered, oh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. It is very similar to DNA, which is our, all our heredity. But there's a change of one of the four amino acids. That makes all the difference in the world. One of the differences is made is that AIDS was a retrovirus. A retrovirus has RNA at its base, uh, not DNA. I believe that was the first retrovirus discovered in humans. Yes, COVID, COVID is a retrovirus. And these are all new. When we're talking about standard uh, bacteria, viruses, and so on, what happens when it gets into the cell is it immediately tells the cell, make a thousand more of me. Mm -hmm. How does it do it? How does the cell know what to do? Well, the whole virus itself is a stretch of DNA or RNA. They have a few enzymes in there that turn on each cell's ability to make new cells. So, yeah, make new cells and other things. And says, this is what it looks like. Try this, try try this combination. Uh, that's been true for a long time. I mean, we understood that for a long time. In fact, when I learned biology, it's no longer true. The uh, standard dogma was DNA 
creates RNA, including this messenger RNA, which create proteins. And now there's another passage that can go RNA that can, can, can create RNA that can do proteins. And the most important thing you're doing in any cell is making proteins to go to other, yourself and to other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, that, in fact, will come up if we go back to the AI in this show. Uh, the RNA viruses are very different in terms of their uh, biology, and they had to come up with new ways of attacking them. Right now, most people with AIDS in this country will live a long and reasonably healthy life. That's one of the most wonderful things that's happened in my life. Anybody, anybody my age lost people to AIDS. Mm -hmm. AIDS was the worst epidemic, they said, since uh, 1919 flu, and it spread worldwide. Uh, they now have literally six or eight different kinds, and there's, there was no way to fight a virus. There now is six or eight different drugs that can go after the AIDS virus if it's in your body. Usually they give a, a combination of three of them and that gets the level of the AIDS virus, not down to nothing, but down to so, so low, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. which is a breakthrough. The, what's happening again is DNA creates RNA, creates proteins, and the virus throws in some foreign DNA. In fact, ask me about that later if we have time in the show, what foreign mm -hmm. DNA, is, DNA is about. Uh, and says, reproduce me, reproduce me, reproduce me. And as we know, it's, uh, it's, it gets around very efficiently. I mean, I'm, I'm looked at funny when somebody asks, what, how is my COVID? Uh, and I say, I actually haven't had it. Uh, and that's so, that's so unusual. Yeah. They don't ask, did you have COVID? They ask what it was. And they're talking about 80% uh, infected at some point or other. And many people reinfected. Now, what I did that is was to explain what this messenger RNA is. What does it do? It gives instructions to the cell to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, break down starch into glucose. Uh, if you're a plant, it's going to tell you you're green and you're going to have to, you're, you're going to adapt to the sun. Almost everything in your body is some kind of protein. Not almost everything in your body, almost every item in your body. There's a large amount that is, for example, bone and calcium. And, there's a whole, and we're all made of water. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the number is. It's something like 95%. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what I just established is RNA, which is a natural, common thing, gets into your cells and says, make more of me. Now, well, how does that kill COVID? It doesn't. In fact, the mRNA vaccines have no effect on COVID but it reduces the severity and prevents them. Well, how's it work? How's it work? It, what, what is, it has no effect, but it, it, it mitigates. How, how, how does that work? It turns on that you can use these RNAs to turn on the body's own immune system. Mm -hmm. And much of what's happening in biology and medicine 
for the last 20 years has been looking at ways to turn on the immune system. The immune system is what fights the cancer that's always getting to you. Remember, there's a trillion cells in us. Almost all of us ha have each form of cancer, one or three or 16 cells, but the body keeps beating it back. Mm -hmm. And what the MRA does is it tells the body, tells the immune system, this is what I look like. This is what you have to get rid of. And the immune system immediately starts creating B cells and T cells and so on that destroy any cell in the body or in the blood wow. uh, that has that signature, which is what the RNA is. So, so let, me just make, let me just make sure I understand so far, Dave. The mRNA, what it does is it helps show the body how to create and, and mobilize its own uh, defense system. And well, the yeah, there's, the a, the, there's the, a step uh, in between yeah. using cells to reproduce it so that you have plenty of it. But yeah, and that's what's happening constantly. Your body is constantly fighting off cold germs in your nose, mm -hmm. but it's also constantly fighting off cancer germs throughout your body. And remember, most of us are 300 million years old. Not personally. But they socketed in systems that are now most of what we have in our bodies 300 million years ago. And over 300 million years, there's a lot of change in mutation. So. You're saying our biology has been evolving for 300 million years, Dave? Is that, is that what you're saying? What the, yeah. You, could, you, you look in some of the single single cell bacteria and you'll see they're using many of the same biological pathways as we do the reason you get all these experiments in mice and so on is they're i don't know 98 percent identical to humans and almost all the systems we have kidneys gallbladders hearing are in mice usually in something that's the same as we are or something mm. very close. Mm -hmm. Because 50 million years ago or 5 million years ago, some useful function evolved and became incorporated in the DNA of all of us and now is so good. At the same time, viruses mutate. And one of the reasons this, this is so serious uh, with COVID is that RNA viruses multiply much faster than the traditional viruses like smallpox and polio, mm -hmm. which are made with DNA. Uh, this was very well known a dozen years ago. And it was one of the two or three reasons that anybody who understood what's happening in genetics and in the medicine knew that RNA virus, and that includes things like Marburg too, are really dangerous. And if they get loose and start doing humans, well, we all know what happened. Mm -hmm. Now, why did at the same time, how, do, how does uh, penicillin, say, build up all resistance? They had to increase the dose of penicillin 10,000 times in the first five years since it started getting widely distributed because new mutants came up. It's just when you have trillions of particles, you'll get a few mutants, and one of them is going to be our strains the strains that we've been hearing about that cause all the spikes. Which is why you need to have boosters, because there's always going to be new versions of any virus, but especially these RNA viruses. It's also the reason why it was madness 
to keep the vaccines away from most of the world. The United States and Western Europe had a few companies that developed them, was tried to gear up to produce as fast as possible, but didn't have nearly enough for the whole world. And we held on to it. This will be remembered. And this may be why there are all these additional strains coming of COVID. That in the people who weren't vaccinated, they were much more vulnerable, 10 times as vulnerable. And since 10 times as likely to have mutation that makes a new strain, mm -hmm. that becomes high. So all this is running. Anyway, so I got you, I got this discussion to the point where you're understanding that mRNA, not all in our, our RNA, but mRNA, puts a pattern into your system that tells the immune system, if you, immune system, immune cell, finds this pattern, the set of amino acids, uh, no, yes, set of amino acids, anywhere in the body, kill that cell. And in fact, one of the immune cells is called a killer T cell because it kills other cells. Cancer is growing in a similar way that it starts as one cell, it takes over the cell mechanism and says, make more of me. Now, in small areas, our drugs usually work. I remember it was 50 years ago when a doctor friend of mine had a patient who had Hodgkin's disease. Hodgkin's disease was inevitably fatal at that time, if I, if I remember correctly. And they said, they're trying this new system out at UCLA, try to get some of it. And it was one, some of, one of the early or two of the early cancer drugs that killed a lot of the cancer cells in your body. But unfortunately, that works on Hodgkin's, which is a blood disease, and most kinds of leukemia, also blood disease, do doesn't work the same way on what's called solid tumors, which is almost everything else, from a lung cancer to a liver cancer to a pancreas cancer, and one of the kinds of skin cancer called melanoma, which is fairly common. This is, this is a major health problem around the world, and we couldn't do very much for it. Now, and the news is that Moderna and Merck working together, Moderna is a strong, strong, small company that when we're talking about this doing something to millions of people, isn't, isn't set up to do that. Have now produced the same kind of MRA that you get as an injection. It tells your cells, produce this protein. That protein goes on the edge of the cell to connect with other cells, which is part of what they all do. And the immune system says, oh, I found this protein, kill it. And until now, we had very little that could work very well against solid tumors. That doesn't mean that the chemotherapy that people are taking is worthless. But very few people have ever been cured of lung cancer by chemotherapy some of which is working with your immune system as well. So this was significant enough that I brought it to the show and spent all the time trying to explain what it is because they're highly optimistic that this technology, making a bit of RNA, put it on a viral vector, make your cells produce the RNA, which could be any combination of amino acids and proteins, 
anything almost, and we can make them exact. So what happened with COVID is a month or so after COVID was discovered in China, maybe even less than a month, a Chinese lab, not the one in Wuhan, well, maybe even the one, maybe it's the same one in Wuhan that they think let it loose, did a complete study of every amino acid in COVID. And like all RNA and DNA that passes on genetics, that's big. It may be two million, it may be two million amino acids and 60 genes. Uh, and it happened that the first breakthrough against COVID was figuring out just what it was, put it in public domain, published it in the magazines, put it up on the web, and everybody in the field was very happy to see it. Because of course, if you're gonna defeat it, you wanna know what it is. And now there was a tool to go right at something like this and defeat it. Wow. Not turning up your whole immune system, just telling the immune system, this is what you gotta kill. Very targeted. Yeah. Right. Wow, that's, 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 that's fascinating. We got we got to take a break, Dave. I, I want to come back uh, and talk some more about this. We're, we're talking listen to the listen to the music coming up in this break. The day before we taped the show, Ahmad Jamal, great musician, died at ninety-two. Oh wow! I didn't hear that. Wow. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have some Ahmad Jamal coming up uh, momentarily. You're listening to Community and Technology. Dave Burstein and Stu Reed. We're talking about uh, a recent breakthrough uh, in cancer treatment using a messenger RNA vaccine to mobilize our, our body's immune system to attack cancer. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Community and Technology on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem.
Okay, we're back. Community of Technology, Dave Bernstein and Stu Reed on WHR 90.3. Before the break, we were talking about a recent breakthrough in uh, messenger RNA uh, vaccines and their uh, attack on uh, cancer. Uh, Dave, if you can give us a, 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 a kind of a reprise of, of, of what this recent breakthrough is all about. I looked at the original information that was released uh, yesterday, the day before, at a big conference. It looks so good that I brought it to the show and it's all over things like the Wall Street Journal. However, it was a study with 157 participants. Mm -hmm. That's more than a tier. stage one, which will be 10 participants probably to see whether the stuff kills people. And you put them in an, uh, enough part of it to pretty much know whether or not it cures people. So the study is reasonably sized. It's appropriately sized for what it is, <laughs> but not enough to guarantee there's nothing the matter here. The thing, the, the results of the study don't sound that great. 64% of the patients with melanoma died within 18 months of getting the vaccine or diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful because the control group, 79% died. So it may have saved, at least for a while, 20% of the people in that trial. And there's nothing that has been that good against lung cancer. There's lots of things that can slow it down. Uh, Keytruda and so on has now been, been out there for a decade, uh, which also works with the immune system in some ways. But Nobody saw results like this in anything. So people were very excited. We were all excited when we understood what messenger RNA can do when we tried to understand what the COVID vaccines were about. And from the beginning, they said, this mRNA technique, we can use it against almost everything infecting the body, including the flu, COVID, and probably now cancer. Now cancer is an incredibly complicated disease. You have, you take 157 people who have melanoma and you actually sequence their DNA and what's going on, you'll find a dozen different mutations, probably more. In some case, in one person, you'll find two or three mutations. Fortunately, most of them have no effect, and the body can find and kill them. So, you said before about can cancer. Uh, you had a comment. What did you? What am I remembering? First after the show. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I was saying that this new technology, at least as I understand it, it mobilizes the, the body's immune system itself in a targeted way to attack specific cancers. And I, I think that's what this new technology does, uh, the messenger RNA vaccine. Um, the, 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 the trial that just got announced was with melanoma cancer. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, if, if I'm understanding the way it works, if they can uh, sequence some of the other uh, RNAs that they may be able to target other cancers with this technology. Is that is that what's going on, Dave? Am I Absolutely. It right? But they're not, never going to find a vaccine for lung cancer in general. They're never going to find a vaccine for herpes virus in general, or for pneumonia. Because the stuff so quickly mutates that new strains always come up. Mm -hmm. Herpes is pretty well known. 
They changed the herpes vaccine a few years ago. I think originally it was in the seven different strains that you might have. And they developed it against, I think, 13 different strains. And if you happen to be one of the 10 people, one of the people who get exposed to number 10 in that sequence, it can save your life and prevent cervical cancer. But cancer is is it's just so so diverse, which is something I didn't know till recently. Now I know this all mostly from a book called The Gene by Saturday. Oh, I can't pronounce it. Muterergy. He's a Columbia professor. He was one of the two or three people in my lifetime who wrote a detailed science book that you can read. I have a little bit of training, not that much, but I could follow most of what was going on. Big book. It well, has lots of stuff. Give us the title again, Dave, so folks can uh, Google it and look the it gene. up. The Gene? Yeah, it's about three years old. And I'll get, I'll get this precise thing on his name. He, before that, wrote one of the very few books in science that I could easily understand what he was saying because he explained it so well. Very, that's very rare. In other words, I'm saying to you in the audience, if you're not afraid of looking at medical information, you can read this and you can understand what is going on in all genetics? The last few chapters are involved in the COVID vaccine, which this guy did work on and knew all the people who produced it because he was a scientist in the middle of all this work. So he's got lots of anecdotes mm. about, about the people that happened. Uh, yeah. So, Dave, let me ask a question. Is is it likely that I'm just looking at the uh, trajectory that this uh, research is on? Is, are we likely to see some developments of some additional vaccines that are uh, effective in attacking other types of cancers? Is that kind of where this messenger RNA technology is going? They probably have a breakthrough. And the, the, the scientists who did this know this much better than I. That mm -hmm. sometimes very funny things happen when your sample isn't big enough. So I'm not swearing it's a breakthrough, but it probably is the first really effective tool we have to turn on the immune system, specifically to kill that cancer. It reduced the likelihood of, of somebody dying from 79% to 64%. Mm. So it hasn't done everything, and it probably won't. But that is the first mRNA against cancer. And there are literally dozens of other labs who are working with M mRNA. Now, Dave, the way mRNA works, uh, I know we were talking about it before the break, but essentially it takes the immune system and shows the immune system what it is that the immune system should be attacking and actually mobilizes your immune system to go after the cancer. Is that, that, that how it works? And that's at least how I understand it. Mm -hmm. And there are many advantages to this. The first is it could be done and it could be done quickly because once you have the sequence of amino acids, there's some very fast machines, price starts at 100,000 and go up from there, that can put together a string of amino acids exactly how you specify it, mm -hmm. 200 or 600 or 2,000. I don't know if they can do 2,000. I'm sure they can. Uh, and use that to trigger immune cells to come against this. That is a huge advantage. Because normally it's, you have to grow, grow the virus or whatever is plaguing people 
in a petri dish, in a mouse, and ultimately in people. That takes a couple of years, even if it was the most important thing to do on Earth, which beating back COVID, I think, was that yeah, day. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it was only a few months before they had a vaccine ready for full-scale testing. It also, because it's standard technique, is relatively inexpensive to produce. They're selling the genetic medicines and things like that for as much as two and a half million dollars, assuming the government will pay. Uh, and though this already, but it's not because it's that hard to make. But the mRNA is very simple to make. They're making it in labs, I know, not just China and England, but in South Africa and Thailand. That any virologist, professor at Thai University, probably can make it and make it at a price that lets it be distributed to many, many people fairly mm -hmm. quickly. That's pretty big. Now, let's go from there to some not so good news. Chrome had a zero day today. You, if you use Chrome as your browser, go to it. Make sure you got the update that Google was able to release in about six hours after they found it. And what did we they find? Use, what happened? You see that a zero day? What is that? The zero day says there's no time. It's out there and it's being used. So maybe, probably not very far, not many, many. So that's something that's serious. I don't bring every time there's a new virus or, or new hack to the show, but this one is substantial and it's easy enough to upgrade to get tested. So Chrome users should go and go to Chrome, uh, go to Google.com and look for the update? Yeah, and if you know how to do it, you can do it in the upper right-hand uh, box of your Chrome. Mm -hmm. And if you don't see it there, that means you're in an automatic update system, which I was. Okay. So you got the update uh, immediately. Uh, that turns out to be really good. I've been doing a lot of WordPress. Mm -hmm. And WordPress is the most popular authoring tool on the web to create websites and content. So because there's so much, it's the first target that everybody looks to mm -hmm. when they're trying to create some malware. And there's been a lot. Uh, it's produced by many people. It doesn't have the kind of quality control that would be used, say, in Chrome or Microsoft Word, we're doing fine. But 60 applications, there's the new zero day, so you must update. Second part of this story, Google discovered that 60 different uh, downloads, which were downloaded 100 million times, were malware. Oh my goodness. That they try, they really do screen what gets put up at their Google store. So this, so this was can. stuff, this was stuff in the Google store and the Play Store? Yep. Wow. And okay. there's lots of this stuff like this. Apple had a big problem mm -hmm. uh, a little while back. Uh, and the reason they have, you, you find these, it's not be just because it's hard to make a, a virus or any or any hacking tool uh, that works almost everywhere. Very hard. But there are a few dozen people around the world who can make things like that and do. The other thing that just came out from Google no, that's a, that's the three things from Google. Yeah, there is another thing that just came out from Google. They have apparently put 160 engineers just on working on the problem 
of bringing AI to their search engine. Ah, <laughs> they, I think they feel a little threatened, are they? Well, the, the, the CAO put it out as a code red. Mm -hmm. And Larry Page, the, fa the founder, got off his private island and came in to help out. Mm. And it turns out that much of the work on this, and many, literally thousands of the best people in the world on this, are at Google. Mm. Because they, they realized a few years ago what it is that's going to be big. And they said, we're turning the whole company around. Mm -hmm. And people like me, and I watch technology pretty closely, didn't realize just how much could be done by something like Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Now, can Google produce something like Chat GPT? Well, it turns out that the initials then stand for a general frequent transformer. And the technique of science of transformers was invented years ago, about four or five years ago, at Google by a team. There are 20 people who are name, whose names were on the paper. Uh, and that's what everybody, including OpenAI and ChatGPT, are using to make this kind of software. That's pretty good is a suggestion that they're going to be able to come up with something decent. Mm -hmm. Now, it's so good a suggestion that unfortunately the CAO believed it. And as you reported on this show a couple of weeks ago, they released their version. It had so many problems that they pulled it off the internet in a day. The same happened to the Chinese giant, Baidu, which is well known in artificial intelligence. So, there is good news. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have a new character. It looks like a teardrop, and it's called the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. They haven't put it out anywhere that the press has found it, but they have put out pictures of what it's going to look like. So, if you manage not to have your life and your computer destroyed by all these things we're, we're warning you about, <laughs> there's a new Pokemon for you. Mm. Now, well, one of the things I wanted to talk about just briefly, Dave, and I, you know, we've talked a lot about AI, and you just talked about how uh, Google is uh, kind of redirecting their company to really embrace AI, AI as, as core to their future. But one of the, one of the things that questions that this kind of AI uh, uh, provokes is what's going to happen with the whole uh, intellectual property uh, as as we get into AI and you know what they call generative uh, uh, intelligence, where you have these these software platforms that generate content, and what that what happens with uh, uh, copyright. And what happened? Who owns the content that's generated by by the, the software? And when the software, you know, we, we we talked earlier on the show on previous shows about part of how this software works is it holds the internet across billions of data points and looks at what hundreds of billions, hundreds of billions of data points, and looks at what has been talked about on the around a given topic or issue. And pulls that together and synthesizes perhaps a new way or a different way of, 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 of talking about that. Is that a copyright infringement itself? If the, the software goes out and looks at something that Dave Burstein has written about a given topic and uses that somehow and recapitulates it in a new way, uh, is, is that an infringement of, of Dave's uh, uh, copyright? Uh, of the first case property? Is First cases are getting to court already. Um, okay. And we don't know. Mm -hmm. There was one case where a low level judge said, you can't copyright what's made by a machine. The copyright law says by a, per a person created such and such. Mm -hmm. And nobody's willing to say ChatGPT is a person yet. Mm -hmm. They will sometime. 
We have to think that. But that's a, that's a different show. I believe the first one got to court when one of the big photo houses, stock photo houses, said, this picture you made, its left arm is bent exactly like in our picture. You found it in our picture mm -hmm. and copied it. Now, we, we, know, we know what's been happening with music sampling to very small things. Mm -hmm. So there is a pre precedent there. And nobody knows how this is going to go when it, when it gets through the court system. It will be in the Supreme Court. It will probably take three years to get it. Mm -hmm. And between now and then, different lower level judges will rule on different things. And it will be very confusing. But the people who own copyrights, the big stock photo houses, every publisher, mm -hmm says, okay, well, it's wonderful, this software. It's great you're taking our stuff and using it to put together something new. And we want to be paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I, I just I just ran, ran across a term, Dave. You know, we, we've, we've heard the term fair use in copyright that would, would basically posits that, well, you can use a, the, a certain limited amount of... Uh, of uh, re re uh, uh, copying can be done under the fair use doctrine, but now they're talking about something called fair learning, which of course, you know, the way this technology works is it goes out, machine learns. And so the, the folks are throwing around this term fair learning. And is there some fair learning that uh, uh, you can say that is uh, uh, covered or, or, or exempts folks uh exempts ai uh uh from copyright infringement under a fair learning doctrine uh, i guess this is something that is yet to be adjudicated in the courts yeah there's no law in anything like that yet mm -hmm. and nobody's nobody's thought of making one before now mm -hmm. but there was an interesting article i believe in the times it said there's one thing that everybody in AI agrees it is time to bring in some regulations that are smart, don't get in the way of doing creative work, and do what the society think is fair on this. The Australians may be mu much more aggressive than the Americans because Australia is doing that for newspaper stories. Mm -hmm. Newspaper stories, but a huge part of the media in Australia is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Right. So I suspect he had something to do with getting that law passed. Mm -hmm. But these are things that I've been talking about for everywhere by everyone. Interesting. Okay, we, we got about five minutes left on the show, Dave. Uh, what else is going on that might be of interest to our uh, listeners and viewers out there in, in, in the tech world? Well, there's a new high-powered way to make sure there's nothing to watch on your TV. <laughs> the old joke was there are 500 channels. And nothing the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, And yeah, nothing that, 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 John, John Malone came up with that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, John Malone, the cable baron. Who That's owned, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Google TV has now put into their software connections to 800 plus free streaming channels. Oh. And I don't know if there's going to be anything to watch. Wow. Well, now, where, where is this, Dave, in Google streaming platform? It's in, it's in Google TV. I don't know how, what it ties into the service that Google is selling, but there's no reason they can't put all the channels in the world on Google TV, the little device that will hook you up your computer to your com your computer to your TV mm -hmm. and on the other side your computer to the web. This most of them are garbage. Many of them are special interest. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to watch tennis 24 hours a day? Well, 
There are people who want to watch tennis 24 hours a day. Some of them buy things, so you can sell ads, ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And there is a real channel, probably, like that. Obviously, the things that, like golf channels. And stuff. Yeah, there, there's a tennis channel. One that I know of, the tennis channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what it can do is something we've been talking about on the show for 10 years. We're still in a Moore's Law world, even if it's slowing down. That means every year, everything gets better mm -hmm. or cheaper. And now, a few years back, it became so cheap to send video and TV channels that you can do it even if you sell a very small number of commercials. And 800 sounds about right. Maybe 100 of them may be public interest and no commercials. Mm -hmm. But there is so much. Now, why we're on the topic of what's on your screen, let me make a recommendation. If you subscribe to the channel from public radio, Masterpiece Radio, if you've watched TV, you know what, what kind of thing there is. They have lots of it. Great. And it's fairly cheap, $8 a month or so on. Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm bringing it to this show is if you subscribe through Amazon, you also get a program called Walter Present. There is a real Walter. He had a show on ITV that were the very best of European and now South American television to Britain. And you can now get it. Loads of shows you never heard of, some of which are really good uh, as part of your subscription to the public broadcast. And it's and called Walter, Walter, Walter Presents Day? Yeah, it's called Walter Presents. I don't remember Walter's yeah. last name. Okay. But he wanted to put his name on the show. Mm -hmm. And it's, and Walter obviously knows what to present. Because <laughs> there's, lots of good, there's lots of good shows there. Okay, well, that's something to look up. Okay, well, this has been Community and Technology, Dave Burstein and Stu Reed. We've uh, kicked around a lot of stuff uh talking about uh, cancer uh, virus uh, treatments uh, and all the way to uh, technology viruses, the latest viruses hit Chrome. Uh, all the latest news in uh, technology and science on Community and Technology, WHCR 90.3, every Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. Stay tuned. You just might learn something. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.